What if you were baking a cake and the main ingredient, say the cake only had two ingredients, for example, or one, <laughs> which of course the cake doesn't have one ingredient. What if you're baking a cake and the main ingredient was something you had no idea? It's like, oh, the main ingredient's in this a box here. You can't look at it. All you could do is just pour it into the pot and cook it. Like, okay. And you were forced to make conclusions about what the nature of a cake was after, uh, you know, you cooked it and you put some icing on it. Well, that would be incredibly stupid, right? You have to say, what's the, ma you know, this is really weird. You make a bunch of conclusions based upon something that you didn't know the main subject of the entity. And of course, we're talking about the double slit experiment. Everybody wants me to comment on the double slit experiment. YouTube is full of a lot of highly polished, very pretty videos that are absolute rubbish. They're just, they're undeniably nonsensical trash. I thought I'd actually look at uh, the main one before making this video. It's like, you know, I refuse to watch this. this guy's got like seven and a half million subscribers. All he does is regurgitate unintelligent uh, trash that you'll find on the internet. And that, of course, is, uh, you know, nothing true is popular, nothing popular is true. That, of course, is uh, consensus. Consensus, of course, never gives you the truth of anything. I made a video several years ago, which never really got any views. I take a, a laser pointer, and then I point it at a shaft of a needle. Not the eye of a needle, right? But just the shaft of a needle. And if uh, the, the, uh, the laser light hits the shaft of the needle, it'll actually make the exact same interference pattern on the wall, as you'll see from the uh, dual slit experiment. But the nature of the dual slit experiment is an experiment uh, of uh, the effect of light as it hits a dual slit. And you'll see countless other YouTube videos saying, well, only one photon was emitted. And yet we can't figure out this great uh, dual slit experiment paradox because we have a dual slit here, but only one photon. Like it's, this <laughs> like it's this light particle traveling in space from point A to point B. And it uh, sees a, a dual slit and then it like, it passes through both at the same time. Well, this, this is the nature of light because light is a wave particle duality, they'll tell you. <laughs> I'm sorry. Oh, God. <clears throat> sorry about that. I, just, I love those convoluted answers that are uh, no different than saying... Um, oh, by the way, this is not my opinion. I have to talk about this uh, very, very quickly. Is that all of current quantum thinks that everything is uh, a particle. It's kind of like Star Trek. You don't know if you grew up watching Star Trek. Everything was particles. They had uh, graviton particles, <laughs> which mediated gravity. They had, uh, they had uh, tachyon particles, which were time particles. And, oh, there was just a particle problem and a particle solution for everything. Yeah, well, we're going to use a deflector dish to d bombard the tachyon with anti-neutrino... Uh, <laughs> Anyway, the fallacy, and the, the fallacies are many, of the double slit experiment and the countless suppositions about it, which are highly convoluted, and they completely break the back of Occam's razor. Yeah, yeah I don't know if you know what Occam's razor is. It completely breaks the back of Occam's razor. As they start out with a dozen, actually it's more than a dozen, but a dozen uh, false suppositions about the nature of light. Before getting to that, Let's first talk about quantum, which is atomism. By the way, the word quantum, quantity, in other words, if you can't count it, it doesn't exist. Modern scientists are not scientists in any Aristotelian or Pythagorean sense. They're mathematicians. And mathematicians, their religion is, if I can't count it, it doesn't exist. And hence we get the word quantum. And I could do a whole video series about the origins of the word quantum and uh, Toland, who actually, anyway, there's a, a long, really freaky history behind that. Anyway, these people actually believe that what's coming out of a magnet, this is their words, not mine, are virtual photons, which are not the inputs or outputs of any experiment ever done, ever. This is literally, you could go on a Wikipedia and find this. You'll find it on like phys.org, where these physicists get together and, you know, they, you know, they puff each other's chest up and talk about nonsense and unicorns and leprechauns. Yes, what's happening is, is that uh, magnets are emitting virtual photons. That's literally what they say is uh, passing, like, you know, you could put one magnet on the side of, like, a piece of lead and another magnet. 
was passing through the ladder of virtual photons. <laughs> These things don't exist. They're not the inputs or outputs of any experiment ever done. They have nothing to do with reality at all. And the reason for this is you can't quantify a field. Now you can if you use the four Maxwellian field equations, but you're not actually defining a field in itself, of itself, by itself. Because the four Maxwellian field equations only define a field with a vector over a period of time with a given result. Joules, watts, amps, volts, so on and so forth. They think everything is a particle, including light. But they can never explain light with a particle. Well, they try to explain it with a wave, but waves don't exist because waves are not things. Waves are what things do. There's no such thing as space. Nikola Tesla said this, and that's where he railed against Einstein, because space has no properties. A space, time, and shadow, and a wave are fundamental emptiness. These are all conceptual reifications which don't exist. There is no such thing as a wave. Waves don't exist at all. This is one of the fundamental errors that they make about light. Anyway, before the dual slit experiment ever begins, they start out, and by the way, this is their own admission, all of quantum is based upon their words, not mine. All of quantum is based upon our understanding of the nature of light. Well, isn't that cute? In other words, they just, they just uh, threw themselves into a bottomless pit by doing that. Everything they understand about quantum is based upon, in other words, the foundation of quantum is based upon what they think light is or is not. And they think it's a wave-particle duality. There are no dualities in nature because nature doesn't enjoin dualities, which means an inherent contradiction. Light is not a wave because waves don't exist. Waves are not things at all. Waves are what things do. It's, it's waving. Waves. Waves of what? Next time someone says waves to you, say waves of what? Uh, it's a photon particle. Particle? How this thing is a light particle? Sure there is. No, there's not. So this thing is a photon particle. It's a conceptual abstraction with no basis in reality. Nikola Tesla said this, so did countless others, Eric Dollard, myself. So this thing is a photon particle. It doesn't exist. It's a misappropriation and misunderstanding of the nature of light, which is a coaxial circuit. Transverse electrical magnetic, longitudinal refraction, compression, whether it be circular or linear, pol linear polarization makes no difference. Light's not an emission. Nothing emits light. Sure it does. No, it doesn't. Before getting on to the dual slit experiment, let's state another fact. By the way, Nikola Tesla referred to uh, light. I'm going to give you the exact quote of Nikola Tesla. There we go. And I said that we realized that he said, this is Tesla. Tesla, light cannot be anything else but a longitudinal disturbance in the ether. He actually calls it a sound wave in the ether. Here we go. As a matter of fact, radio transmitters emit nothing else. By the way, radio transmitters emitting EMR. EMR and light, whether that be radio or, or light, are both EMR, are nothing else but sound waves in the ether. The reason why he uses sound as the perfect analogy is the same phenomena that you actually see with sound. When people talk about constructive and destructive interference, the resultant effect of the dual slit experiment. If you actually, uh, these experiments have been done, you can find them on YouTube. You set up a barriers and a high sonic or low sonic uh, burst of sound is created. You'll actually get the exact same constructive and destructive interference from sound. And of course, sound is a perturbation of uh, the air, nitrogen and oxygen. Nothing emits sound and nothing emits light. Sure you do, we've got a speed of sound. Well, the speed of sound is the hysteresis of the air. Yeah, that's the maximum rate of propagation. Maximum, I say, because sound doesn't have a set speed. It changes upon the density of the air, whether it's really hot air, really cold air. Light is the exact same uh, way. There's not, the speed of light's constant. No, it's not. And that's not only my position, it's the position of every branch of science in the world. Because light changes speeds, or what is not a speed, actually, but a rate of induction when it passes through glass or water. It changes. By the way, if light were an emission, you can never explain light speeding back up after it left glass without breaking the law of conservation of energy. You can never ever explain light as a wave or a particle or wave-particle duality or an emission without breaking the law of conservation of energy. Anyway, the uh, dual slit experiment falls out, starts out with the extremely false supposition of uh, over a dozen different things as to the nature of light. In other words, an experiment is performed a result is observed, 
And conclusions are uh, made from that resultant observation, which are all over YouTube and everywhere else. But you can't conduct an experiment until you understand the nature of what is being experimented on. Light! And they have absolutely no idea. You can't uh, base any conclusions on a cake from a mystery main ingredient that you have no idea what it is. Just throw that in the pot. Don't look at it, you know. And then tell us everything you know about the cake that comes out of the oven. Well, we have no idea what made the cake. You have no idea how it was made, what, how it works. You know, you know nothing about the main ingredient. Nothing at all. So life's not an emission. Nothing emits sound either. A perturbation is created in the medium. Light does the same thing. It creates a perturbation with a set frequency. Yeah, except the nature of light is slightly different than the nature of sound, but they're both perturbations of the medium. The medium of sound is the air. Yes, we all know this. The uh, medium of uh, light is, of course, the ether. But, if you're an atomist, the fundamental religion is not only that you believe that everything is atoms and particles, but that there's no such thing as the ether. <laughs> because atomism surplants the ether and it replaces it with particleism. Yes, light is a photon particle and it <laughs> everything's a particle. Problem, particle, solution. Everything's particles to them. When you surplant the ether, you must replace it with something else. There's only <clears throat> ever been two foundations of reality ever made throughout all of history, including today. One is the ether, and the other one is atomism. And atomism is completely untenable. It can't explain the nature of cosmic mechanics. It can't explain light. It can't explain instantaneous action at a distance. It can't tell you what a field is. It can't define energy, because energy is ineffable. No branch of science has ever defined the term field, and they've never defined the term energy. Sure they have. Go Wikipedia, and I can find a definition of a field. No, you can't. <laughs> I dare you to go try. If you think it's one, there's one there, then you're not that intelligent. If you read really closely, there's absolutely no definition of the term field or of the term energy. But if you read what magnetism is, you'll actually read a quote from the cult of quantum telling you that uh, magnets emit virtual photons. <laughs> that's, the, that's absolutely no different than saying... Uh, uh, unicorns and leprechauns, microscopic ones, are leaping out of magnets. It's ineffably no different. It's say dragons, unicorns, le virtual photons. Light has no speed. It's, again, that's the hysteresis of the ether. It's the rate of propagation dependent upon the medium. In other words, the hysteresis of the ether is what we know as C, or what we conventionally call, unintelligent human beings, call speed of light. That's not a speed, it's a rate of induction. Light doesn't travel from point A to point B. Sure it does, because it's got... And, what, and this is something I really haven't emphasized enough in all the videos that I've uh, done on cosmic mechanics, is that every human being on Earth, well, essentially everyone, nearly 100%, if something has a speed, then that means, A, that there is something palpable, in other words, an object of some kind, and if it has a speed, it means it's traveling from point A to point B. Because when you say speed... Speed of sound, speed of light. Every human being on Earth will think that it is something, number one. And number two, it's traveling from hya to hya. Because that's like being in your car. It's your car. And it's traveling from point A to point B. And it has a speed. But it's not a speed. It's a rate of induction. It's a rate of induction of the perturbation of the medium itself. That medium being the air. That medium being the ether. You can never explain even half the phenomena observed of light by this wave-particle duality nonsense, which is completely illogical and breaks the back of, Occ of Occam's razor. You can never, ever explain it. You can't explain it easily and simply with the ether, but you can never explain it without a waves and wave-particle duality. Light is not an emission, it does not have a speed, it doesn't travel from point A to point B, it's not a particle, it's not a wave, and it's not a wave-particle duality. That's only six of them. There's still a half dozen more which are more subtle than that. Mother Nature is not a, you know, a nerdy chick with glasses, you know, with a, uh, a calculator in each hip pocket. I mean, she's a uh, hairy armpit chick with muddy feet and a hemp skirt. 
Everything she does works off of pressure mediation. Capacitance, resistance, permeability, permittivity, centrifugal divergence, centripetal convergence, force in motion, inertia, and acceleration. The most fundamental force of the universe is a three-dimensional S-curve which necessitatively so must extrapolate out 3D geometry, extrapolate out the interior torus geometry that is the geometry of force and motion. There is only inertia and acceleration and force and divergence. There is only the toroid and the hyperboloid, both of which are the negative image of one another. The negative image of a torus is a hyperboloid. The negative image of a hyperboloid is a torus. Hyperboloid is an hourglass shape, by the way. The double slit experiment is easy to understand, but you cannot even begin to have a debate about it unless you first have a discussion about what the heck light is and what the heck light is not. It is simplex constructive and destructive interference. The ether slit or shaft whose spatially uh, original perturbations are created. Um, on two rarefactions, uh, you will have uh, mutual intensity. With two nullifications or compression, you'll have mutual, uh, mutual null points. Constructive and destructive interference. The exact same phenomena we see with sound. Same phenomena you see if you actually make two disturbances in the water. You'll actually have, uh, they'll say, well, the waves are canceling each other out. In this case, we know what the waves are. The waves of water. Well, the waves of light. Of course, waves of what? The waves of the ether. Light is just a coaxial circuit ether perturbation modality. Let me repeat that since it's so important. Light is nothing other than a coaxial circuit ether perturbation modality. That's not complex. It might sound complex superficially so, but it's very, very simple. I hope you like this video. If you do, leave a comment. If you don't, leave a comment. Let me know. You know, a lot of people say at the end of it, tell me what you think. I'm not one of those people that wants... <laughs> I'm not interested in knowing something different other than the facts. When someone says, tell me what you think, it's like saying, I'm not sure myself, but tell me if you think I'm right. I don't suffer. I don't suffer such inadequacy. <laughs> Inadequacies of understanding. <laughs> Therefore, I don't, ever, I don't ever ask those questions like that. Yeah. Anyway... Have a good one, and goodbye. Oh, boy.